All right, well, welcome back. Today, let's uh, do a new project. This is fun. I'm, I'm gearing up for marble season in Northern California. And so today, let's work on some little fumed and stamped marbles. These are very simple. The only color I'm using is cobalt. I'm using uh, silver and gold fume to give that metallic uh, multicolor sheen to these. They're, uh, in this case, it's uh, flowers and leaves. Very nice floral design stamped onto this, uh, this marble here. I do love how these, uh, these look. They really glisten in the sun. Very sparkly uh, elements. They look almost dichroic, yet there's no dichro in them. So uh, let's get on to how we make these things. There's a little bit bigger one there. More of the same stamps. Let's see, then we got one more. That one there. So you can see that they're, they're just stamped in. They're fumed to highlight them. And then I drop a big glob of clear on top of each design and round it all into the finished marble uh, so that we have that design saved in place. So uh, what we're going to do to make this uh, stamped and fumed floral marble is we're going to have a handle of roughly 10 millimeter clear glass uh, that's hooked up to what is some cobalt over clear. It'll be clear on the interior of this and that's going to look something like uh, one of these. There's uh, cobalt over clear and the reason I do that is the cobalt really takes a nice impression. When you heat it up and stamp it, it's going to stay stamped uh, when you put hot clear on it. But yet I like having the clear on the inside so that the whole piece rounds out into a marble nicely. If you had uh, solid cobalt this thick, it would take a lot more heat to drive it into a round shape cleanly than having the clear core, a layer of cobalt, uh, which is going to get impressioned, and then moving on to a finished marble is uh, easier than with solid cobalt. So, okay, we've seen that there. Uh, we're going to just heat it up and kind of round it. doesn't have to be a marble shape at all. Just let it kind of bulge up. And then we're going to take leather stamps, different designs, and just put it in the flame, heat up a spot, and then tag it. And pull it off, and you'll have that design pushed in. So then we'll fume it. Uh, I generally fume with silver. Gold is a good addition. You may do one side in silver and the other side in gold. It gives a nice contrast. Uh, you can combine them and get different hues of colors. Uh, so here we go. It's in the torch. We've stamped it. We're going to fume it with either silver or gold. Uh, and then we're going to add big globs of clear over each design, almost touching each other, until we've saved all of those under the clear so that even when we round it into a marble, uh, it's going to stay there. So after we finish up this entire side, we'll go ahead and round that down in a marble mold, and then we'll hook up a punny instead of adding just a bunch of clear on we'll just hook up a punny and hold it and then we'll work this side doing the same thing so we're going to reverse it we're going to repeat adding all of the uh, stamp designs we're going to repeat the fuming and then we're going to repeat adding the clear and then when we round this side off maybe change axis once so that your uh, last punny is at a right angle to the first two and that way you can round it it'll come out perfectly round and uh, when you're finished rounding it, you should have a marble that is a very cool looking little simple round piece of glass with a bunch of stamped and fumed uh, flowers in them. Just a, a fun project. They can look real pretty. So I hope you like this. I hope you try them because they are fun. And don't limit yourself to leather stamps or other found objects, things you can press into glass that will leave their designs that are really elegant. All right, let's get to this. All right, now this uh, cobalt that I'm adding on, it started off as one inch heavy wall tube, uh, which I pulled it down to about a half inch and a fairly thin wall. And uh, I'm just spiraling it on here, uh, overlapping the edges just a little bit to try and eliminate capturing any air bubbles. Uh, and it's very important that you remember when uh, applying tubing over the surface of a solid like this uh, to leave uh, the 
back end of it open. If you uh, have a sealed tube and you're trying to do that, the air inside is going to continue to heat and expand and bubble and pop where you're trying to apply it. So uh, just make sure that you have a hole at the other end of that tube so that the escaping gas has somewhere to go. And I uh, just pulled off the little bleb on the end there, kind of clean it up. Uh, you can see how it spiraled on nice and even, just overlapping smoothly. Uh, we're going to go ahead and melt all this in and smooth it down, uh, marver it and shape it so that it's ready. And there's enough material here to do uh, two marbles. So uh, after it's melted down, smoothed in, uh, and if you if you don't melt it and smooth it in now, uh, you know the chances of it cracking and uh, fracturing where the cobalt meets the clear is uh, is pretty high, uh, especially if you're making two marbles and working one out on the end. So I'm really going to melt this together and then clean it up so it's it's like a good solid uh, smooth piece of glass. specifically right there where the cobalt meets the clear. And this is just going to be a punty so that I can marver a, a little neck right there and that'll separate the clear portion from the cobalt clad portion. I'm just using a real tight small hot flame and then drop it down into the uh, arrowhead marver and put a little neck in it. There we go. Nice and clean. Won't break while we're working uh, out on the end of it. Now here we'll divide up the material for the two marbles. And the reason I'm using that small flame instead of the big one on top, if I use the top one, uh, it's going to have so much blow around heat uh, that it's going to soften the entire mass. I just want that one narrow little ring of hot material so that I can differentiate the two pieces. So by separating the material on the marver and uh, applying heat then in that crevice which is formed, I can kind of go to the core of it without really affecting the material to either side. There we go. That looks to be necked down pretty good. And you can see we've almost got a couple of marble shapes there. All right, so I've just heated that up uh, with the flame and let gravity do its thing, and it's, it's kind of halfway round. Uh, and at this point, I'm going to pick out a bunch of leather stamps and grab a few that I think will go well together on this. We'll start with a, a big flower on one end and uh, just really heat that material up and then uh, precisely place that in the, the center and stamp it in. And it's easier to do when I drop it down onto that backing plate on the marvering pad and, and uh, you know, kind of steady it. Then we'll go around the side and add in some, uh, some more flowers. Just really heat up a spot and then rest it in the backing plate on the marvering pad and give a little press in. Just make sure that you're uh, 
blow by heat here isn't melting the ones that you've already stamped. So just kind of look at where your flame is going and try not to get it into the ones you've already done. All right, there's some flowers on the side and we've got a little bit of space in between so there we will apply leaves. One more. All right, that kind of fills up that area. So here's what we've got now is that half stamped area on the end. And uh, it, it, it looks cool, but it needs the fume to really highlight the, the shapes. And we'll definitely need the fume when we encase it to really have that metallic sheen. Go. We've got silver all over it, and now we'll heat up that uh, clear rod, get a little gather going on the end, and then drop it down and flatten it out on each of those stamped designs. Now while the clear rod is clearly molten when I'm applying it, the material underneath with the fuming on it, you want it to be warm. Just barely start to glow when you drop that on there. If you get it too hot and drop the clear on, it'll, it'll mush the design and you'll wind up with something that looks very squished uh, or even just not even recognizable. But uh, when you get the temperature right, it'll drop on and adhere to it and not crack off. If it's too cold and you apply too much hot glass, there's always going to be that little stress line between them. So uh, it's a delicate thing, but get that uh, marble up to temperature uh, to where it's just starting to glow before you apply those. And the best way to figure out the right way to do it is to do it the wrong way a few times. All right, now I'm switching over to a little bit larger uh, punty here. It's going to be uh, my uh, punty for the opposite side there. And I can fill in that big flower that I did uh, at the end in one pass. And clean up your material as you work. It's really quick while that's still nice and hot just to marble it down, clean it up and make it ready for the next use. And then just a whole lot of heat there. And we'll round that down and we'll get it roughly uh, rounded on that side. Now it won't come out round your first pass or your second, and that's that's to be expected. We're going to give it a few passes through here, and you know, uh, work it in stages. You can't just put it in once and push real hard. It's it's got to be reheated and reworked, and go back and forth when you're marveling so as not to twist the design by only going in one direction. So you can see there we've got our encased, stamped, fumed, uh, floral and leaf designs and it's halfway to being a marble. So we'll switch over and put a punty uh, on that side so that we can then cut that uh, off of the rest of the handle and do the other side. Now you want this to have a pretty good footprint on that punty. Uh, it's easy enough to clean up later, but it's going to be taking a lot of heat and you want to be able to rely on it. There we go. 
time to cut that off. Now, if any of you are wondering what those uh, objects on the floor are, those are peanuts for the squirrels and sunflowers for the birds. If you've seen my shop tour, you know I work outside in a greenhouse and the entire thing is elevated almost a foot off the ground. So these critters like to run in while I'm working and crawl over my feet and grab peanuts and run away with them, which I think is delightful. Alright, finally got that cut off there. Alright, now we'll do the other half. Again, uh, stamping in some flowers and then I'll fill in the dead space with a few leaves. Now, a word on safety and uh, work habits, kind of like when you're whittling with a knife or using a sharp tool, always have like a plan for if it slips or slides. And in this case, when pushing down and pushing together, it's all compression. I'm tending not to be breaking my punnies. Uh, if I was trying to do this holding it up in the air and putting all that force on the punty, likely enough it would break off. So resting it down on the marvering pad and then applying force uh, at an equal angle with the punny and the press means that should that punty break, I'm not going to slam it anywhere. Uh, you know, it's not going to break off and jam hot glass into my hand or anything. Um, just keep in mind when you're working with this stuff, it is very hot and it can become very sharp very quickly. So when applying force and stamping and doing things like this or even raking, uh, Consider that, you know, that stuff may break at any time and your fingers may fly places suddenly with the release of pressure and, and it, can, it can hurt. Uh, so you, you should develop that innate sense of like when you're whittling, you don't pull the knife towards you and so that when it cuts through and slips, you stab yourself with it. You, you want to be very careful. All right, back to, back to what we're doing here. We've got uh, silver fume on that side too. Got all our stuff stamped in, and we'll grab some more clear rod and cover those designs up so that they can uh, be saved. kind of going around and spacing them out evenly, do one side and then the other, kind of move it around like you're tightening lug nuts on a vehicle. Anytime that you can distribute heat and stress more evenly, uh, it, it'll reflect in the piece. Just about got that all filled in there. Now, just a, a side note, uh, glass is almost always considered to be an insulator, but uh, I learned not too long back that actually uh, glass, when it's molten, is a conductor, and it will conduct electricity. Uh, kind of a weird little fact. All right, well, we got our covering on there so now just back up to the big flame and we'll work this back and forth a few times and uh, really round it down and make it marble shaped. And again if you uh, rotate in one direction continuously and don't go back and forth at all uh, you can impart a twist to your molten material so if you want to keep everything straight uh, try and go one direction as much as the other. There we go. Getting rounder. We've still got some 
depressions and voids in there and some wrinkles, but uh, a little bit more heat and rounding, and we'll take care of that. really getting it warm so that we can marve or, uh, round it down there. But uh, shooting the flame around and away from the punny so that that stays as firm as possible while the whole thing is uh, molten. final rounding out there. Now we'll still have to switch bunnies and round up where that big one is. Now the inside of that uh, marvering block on the marble tong uh, isn't hemispherical cut out. It's uh, just a tapered kind of a, a V-shape like a funnel inside. And uh, it's uh, basically you can just round out any size marble that fits comfortably in it or on top of it. All right, taking a look at it, make sure that we're round. All right, Got a little bit of warm up there before we stick it in those cold tongs tap off the punny and then we'll fire polish the pot spot where that last punty was attached. And after we get that heated up and it starts to smooth down, we'll roll it around inside of that uh, funnel shape and as it touches those edges it further smooths it. final fire polish there. And looks good. Alright. So the next step is just to put it back into the kiln and uh, give it some annealing time at the right temperature. In this case, uh, oh, probably about uh, 1075 for, well, I've got more work to do, so it'll get plenty of time in there, but uh, I would make sure it sits in there at full temperature for at least uh, a half hour. All right, well, there's a few done ones, and uh, I hope you all enjoyed this, and get out there and try it yourself, and look for other objects, too. Uh, there are lots of things that you can press into glass that make interesting designs. So, uh, thank you.